So hello once again. Um, I'm going to be introducing Mohammed Hamoud now. Uh, Mohammed uh, specializes in learning and leadership development. Uh, he has been involved in various public speaking engagements focusing on interfaith and training on leadership, diversity, and inclusion. Um, recently, he spoke at a TEDx uh, event on reclaiming the Muslim narrative and combating Islamophobia, and he was the candidate for the Liberal Party of Canada for the riding of London from shore in the last federal election. So he's a big deal in this industry. <laughs> uh, Mohammed, uh, a round of applause, please. Actually, the big deal are you, the people in the room, because this is why we are here. We want to make sure that, I want to say that we're giving a voice to the voiceless, but you are not without a voice. You don't have a platform where your voice can be heard. And this is why it's so important that this initiative is allowing us to start with baby steps, to work with our uh, colleagues and to work with media organizations, to work with the generosity of, of uh, different uh, journalism schools and media outlets, uh, especially here at Seneca. So I do also want to have a personal shout out to Tim and his team because they have owned it for the past several weeks. Tim has been on top of this like you won't believe. And there's a lot of work that goes into making something like this happen. But the work is definitely worth it because we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to work so that you can actually learn how to write for a Canadian audience. All of you are established and accomplished, but we know that there are barriers and we still have not realized that we are stronger because of our differences and not in spite of them. So we have to work together to make sure that these barriers are taken down bit by bit we can do it because systemic racism does exist. Even when we have the best of intentions, we still feel as an immigrant that we're the token person in the room. So. Let's please work hard to make sure that when you leave today, connect with us, connect with Joyita at the back on how you can become part of the, the collective and learn how to, to continue writing so that your voice can resonate and people in Canada can actually hear the pulse of Immigrant Canada. So thank you very much for coming today and spending your Saturday with us. Thank you, Kurt and Tim and team for the great work that you're doing. And as an immigrant, I'm going to introduce a fellow immigrant. And this person doesn't need a lot of introduction because they're really well known in the Toronto and in the Canadian landscape. This person has worked really, really hard. And like you and I, this person is also an immigrant. Came to Canada, and I remember this person when they started working at a restaurant. We used to go visit that restaurant because there weren't a lot of halal restaurants where I was from in London, Ontario, so we drove to Toronto to have a bite. And when I would come and visit uh, Paramount restaurants over on Eglinton, the same generous, humble person that I knew then, Mr. Mohammed Faki, is the same person that is with us today. And Mohammed has been a very strong proponent to make sure that immigrants are heard because he knows how difficult it is for immigrants to participate and, and to be heard. And so he has really become a, a, a steward of voicing the immigrant concerns. He, he works with everyone. Because what we want to do at the end of the day, we want to say that we are part of the community. We don't want it them versus us. We want to make sure that it's all inclusive. Diversity, as you see in this room, does not mean inclusion. We have to strive hard so that we participate and no one has to open the door for us to come in to this circle of safety where we feel that we belong. We actually take the first step and we walk in. And that's what Mohammed has done. So I, without further ado, I want to ask you to welcome Mr. Mohammed Faki. And thank you in advance. Good morning, good morning everyone. And thank you very much for inviting me. Oh, I have to hold it? Again, good morning. <laughs> There's nothing than smiling you twice and greeting people more than once. So good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for having me here. And to the team in the back, you know, you look very impressive when I walk in. I speak at a lot of places. I saw a very professional team set up, ready to actually communicate with the rest of the world. That's a great. Thank you very much for what you do. I know you're in for an interesting and very useful and eye-opening day for all of you. I feel lucky to be part of it. I want to thank you for being here, for being interested and engaged. This conversation is a very important conversation for all of us. And especially want to express my appreciation to all the journalists across our country who tell the story of our country as it is. 
our full story with everyone a part of it, no matter who they are or how they look. Let me tell you a little bit about who I am. My story is not only my own. It's a familiar immigrant story. The story of an immigrant. The story of a, someone with hope who left his home and his country, his parents, his family in search of a better opportunity and the chance to build a better life like all of you here. I left Lebanon during the war. I was 16 years old. As a refugee, I had to move many cities, just running away from war, restarting again, seeing my parents restarting with no money, no house, no school for us, again and again. After some time, I moved to Italy. I studied gemology, so I'm a gemologist that sells shawarma, basically. <laughs> After a while in Italy, and I became a gemologist with a master's degree in geology, I came to Canada as an immigrant. So I know ref the refugee story. I've been a refugee and I've been an immigrant at the same time. I landed here with almost nothing. People welcomed me right from the start. They made me feel more like a citizen than a newcomer. I wasn't afraid to start at the bottom. I got a job in a coffee shop. It was a great way to learn the language, to learn Canada, Canadians, the customs. And most importantly, why people always in the elevator talk about the weather. I still wonder that. So <laughs> I got to learn that working at a coffee shop. Everyone walks in and starts talking about the weather, even when it's sunny outside. I start doing it myself. I still haven't figured out why we do it, but, but it's working for me. So. And it worked now, you guys laughing at me. So. And I lived in a basement apartment. I shared the basement apartment with two people. Then it got better, became one. <laughs> and it got even better, he left. Apparently I'm a bad roommate. <laughs> so I had to teach French to the landlord daughter to be able to pay, to pay the rent because that's how bad cash flow was for me. Had no money whatsoever. But this is the immigrant way. When I wasn't sleeping, I was working. I was working all the time to earn some money so one day I could build something of my own. Immigrants are very ambitious. We work very hard. We stay positive even through periods of hardship because we know that hard work can bring a lot of rewards. People would say to me, Mohammed, you work all the time. You must be sore. And I always say, well, the only thing that really hurt is my jaw. I'm always smiling. <laughs> And it's true, I still until now work 20 hours a day. And it doesn't have to be only paramount. Because if you think your job is only the actual job that you wake up in the morning and you earn from money, is your only job, you're starting by limiting yourself. Our work is everyone's job in this country. Everyone's concern, every Canadian's concern is our job. Every day to wake up excited to resolve people's problem and to bring a better day for someone else. And that's our job and should be our priority. One day my wife sent me to buy her baklava from this shop called Paramount. And it was a very weird location, industrial area. It has a sign Paramount, but was nothing Paramount about the place. <laughs> so I had a conversation with the owner and he was struggling near bankruptcy. At that point, I had saved up just enough money and I decided to take a chance. We bought the restaurant and then another restaurant and then another restaurant until it became a company. And that was in 2007. Today, Paramount Fine Food has more than 80 locations around the world, operating in seven countries and 2,000 employees. Wow. That's the immigrant story. And you can see our name in a very big major sports arena in Mississauga, it said the Paramount Fine Food Center. That's the same Mississauga where I landed with $1,200 in Pearson Airport. I cried that day that they were putting up that sign because when I landed here, I never thought I would have even my name on a business card, not alone a big building. Mm -hmm. So you can see we did it all by selling Lebanese food, the food that I love from a country I love. There is something I always say in a lot of speeches. There is a couple of things I always repeat, that diversity is a fact, but inclusion 
is a choice. So diversity is a fact. We're, we're, we're diverse. We come from different places. But inclusion and including people is our choice. And there is one more thing that I say, and I'm going to be basing a lot of what I'm going to say today about. And it's something that I truly believe as people and as a community, as a country, we actually become what we celebrate. I'm going to repeat, we become what we celebrate. People are inspired to follow the examples that have been set usually. When we celebrate career success, what we do is we inspire others to aim high in their education and in their ambition because we see people are being celebrated. We see what them being celebrated will get them and we want to be celebrated like them. So we become what we celebrate. When we celebrate business success, we help to create the next generation of entrepreneurs. That's normal. When we stand up for one another in difficult times, we celebrate the importance of loyalty and solidarity because we show that we celebrate it by standing together and making each other's life easier in the time of pain. But here's where you come in, journalist. People can only celebrate what they see. People only can celebrate what they read. And that's where you play a role. An immigrant comes to Canada, she builds a business, maybe she invents a new technology, she's going to inspire those around her. She will be celebrated, but by much a smaller circle if we don't tell her story, if we don't celebrate her story. But imagine the impact if that story is shared, if her story is told, if more Canadians are able to celebrate her success and work to become what they celebrate. Suddenly she becomes a role model, not to a few, but to many. This isn't something I normally do. But I want to talk to you about why I try to put myself in the spotlight. And a lot of people say, is he doing it because of the media? Does he need media? Is that why he's doing it? So when I go on TV or I give a speech or when I stand with a mayor or a prime minister, partially I'm being a little bit selfish, right? I'm promoting myself, I'm promoting my company. I've seen all this on social media being told about me. Is he doing it for the right reason or he's doing it for the media? I'm trying to raise my profile, that's all true. But if you know what's in my heart, then you know that I'm doing it for another reason too. I want people to see an Arab, a Muslim, an immigrant in a position of prominence, in a position of influence. I want them to, I want to help to change the way immigrants are looked at, the way Muslims are looked at, the way everyone is looked at just because they came from a different background. And I want to show that by action. I want them to see that an Arab, a Muslim and an immigrant raising money for a charity that is not a Muslim charity, that is not an Arab charity, is working hard for people in need because he celebrates the fact of being Canadian and help others from different backgrounds. I want other immigrants to look at me and say, if that guy can be successful in business and can help others, maybe I can too. I try to become someone that it's worth celebrating. So hopefully, everyone else will look at it and say, I want to become like him or better. So we become what we celebrate. And when Syrian refugee came to Canada last year, they needed jobs and I was driving and I heard on the radio someone saying, why are we bringing 25,000 terrorists here? Hmm. Right? I got on the phone and I launched my initiative for 150 Syrian refugees hired by Paramount to send a message that these people do not need a handout. They need a hand up. Hmm. And let me tell you, those 150 people are my best employee that I've ever hired. They're skilled, they actually go above and beyond what's asked of them, right? So there's nothing like the feeling of giving another human being another chance. And there is nothing better than the feeling of seeing them prosper. And Canadian, what they saw? They saw an immigrant like me, Arab, Muslim, opening his doors to newcomers, providing a solution to what they thought was a problem. 
and made, send a message that it's easy to do it for you too, for your company. And we launched a campaign in partnership with Ryerson University. And we hired someone from Ryerson to teach Syrian refugees how to write a resume Aww. and how to be ready to be employed by Canadian employers. So it'll make it easier not only to hire them at Paramount, but much bigger and beyond. When the owner of Sufi restaurant got that threat, just because of their background, and they were almost about to close their dream, the door to their business, to lose everything, quite honestly, everything, to feel the safety I felt when I came to Canada. I love this country. I love its people. They treated me so well. And I want everyone to live that dream. I don't want anyone. I don't want the intolerant to take away that dream from every immigrant that come here. So what I did, I went and I said, you're not shutting down that business. And he said, no, no, we're done. You know, we, we are very intimidated. We do not want to rock the boat. We feel we come here as immigrants and we're, we're, we're grateful to be accepted. So we do not want to rock the boat. We don't want to be looked at as troublemakers, but sometimes too much. So he wanted just to say, if it's safety or my business, forget about my business. It's the safety of my family and my customer. And I said, no, that's not the two choices. I'm going to tell you a different story. If you set that example, tomorrow will be a second business and another business and another business. So I told him, you go sit home. You need some time, take time off. I'll bring my staff and we'll reopen this business. We're going to send a message that hate will never win in Canada. We're going to send a message that Canadian will not be intimidated by hate. And what did Canadians see? They saw a Muslim, an Arab, an immigrant stepping up to help others in the time of need. One more time. When Flight 752 was shut down in Tehran, 57 Canadians, 29 resident, residents were killed. We started Canada's strong campaign. You all heard about it. We were sitting in one room and we're saying a million dollars. Let's raise a million dollars for these people. We said, okay, let's, let's try to raise a million and a half. And if we got to a million, we're happy. We raised more than $3.3 million from Canadians. Canadians came together for people maybe they never met, mm. just to tell them and send a message of love, support, and solidarity. This isn't just a country. This is one big family. And families stood as one for the victims' families in Tehran that we lost, and they're Canadian. We need to stop talking about, yes, I'm Lebanese Canadian. Right? And you're Nigerian Canadian, right? And she's Indian Canadian. So what, what's in common? Canadian. And we need to talk more about that. But we need to talk about it the opposite way. We have the same right as every other Canadian. The right for our voice and our story to be heard and repeated and seen. So we become what we celebrate again. So the Canadian, all of them saw someone that is Lebanese Canadian, is not Iranian, immigrant, taking action to help others and to show that no matter who we are, no matter where you're from, no matter what your background or your religion, a Canadian is a Canadian. Again, let me speak specifically about being a Muslim and starting out in Canada, right? It's not an easy experience. There can be pressure on Muslim here sometimes. We all feel it from time to time. For ourselves, even for our kids, I was attacked for two years and I had to fight it in court. And I won a biggest court case against hate speech, two and a half million dollars. <laughs> a lot of time my wife asked me, why are we doing this? You're putting a target on your back. I said, there is already a target on my back anyway. <laughs> but I'm not doing it only for my three boys. I'm doing it for every single child in this country. We actually think our children are not subject to hate and to comment to racist comment because they were born here. We actually tell our children, you know, you're born in Canada, you're Canadian, you didn't feel what we felt. You need to be very careful. We need to tell the stories of our children. You as a journalist have the obligation to write out the stories of our children that they're actually subject to certain comments a lot of the time, right? Some of my friends, they've tried actually to fit in. And some of them decided to fit in by changing or shortening their names. So all of a sudden, Mohammed become Mo or me or Mike or <laughs> Boo or, or funny names, right? And Bil Bilal become Billy and Bilo. And like, what, what happened? Like, what happened to you? When did you become that way, right? So, and some, they stay away from mosques, churches, and, and some even, they stay away from Muslim friends or African friends because, you know, I'm different. Like, what's different about you? 
Yes, we are different. I'm Canadian Muslim, but makes me special, makes me unique. This beautiful mosaic needs to be celebrated. You're beautiful, and she's beautiful, and she's beautiful because we're different. Imagine if we all looked alike, act alike, moved alike. It would be very boring, right? So changing your name, staying away from your community, right? Turning away from Muslim friends or Nigerian friends, right? that's not a solution. That doesn't make you more Canadians. We need to redefine what more Canadian mean. And more Canadian should mean to be proud of where you came from and never forget where you came from. Love this country. I love Canada. Hmm. I'm dying to even serve, serve the country. Like I, 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 every morning I wake up very excited. First I wake up excited, then I figure out what am I excited about. <laughs> <laughs> because there is nothing not to be excited about to be Canadian. It's beautiful. But doesn't mean that we should not understand the challenges we face and work to make it better in a world that badly needs it. So personally, I never hide myself. Canada is stuck with me as I am. But I think the pressure will be less if they saw images and heard the story of their own kind of thriving in Canada, right? So if you hear a great story about Masai Ujiri and and, and people from your background are thriving and they became successful, you feel like, I want to be there too. Mm. So we need to tell more of those success stories. And that goes back to we become what we celebrate. As people who have not have to compromise and disguise from who they are. Like stop thinking, you know, where are you from? I sometimes ask people, where are you from? You know, my mom is this, my dad is that. <laughs> like it's either you haven't read your ID or you don't know where you're from. Why are you trying to confuse me? Where are you from? <laughs> right? but just to stand up straight, proud, and say where you're from. You are who you are. You become who you are because of the experiences you learned from the old people. From the, I am who I am today because of the older people in South Lebanon that taught me still a lot of things, a lot of wisdom. And the people that I learned from in Italy and the people I learned from in Canada. I'm not only one. I'm a combination of all the knowledge and be proud of that knowledge because that's what made you, that's what make you make those decisions. So don't start hiding it. And yes, I agree with you, Mohammed, with what you say. I'm just a Canadian, one Canadian, an immigrant, a Muslim, someone who came here with very little, but I know with my heart that Canada, it's better when it's us and them, not us versus them, you're right. Canada works best when its people understand each other. And you can't empathize if you don't understand. And you can't relate if you don't understand. And you can't understand if you live in this country as a solitude. You need to befriend people from different backgrounds. Ask yourself. We ask Canada to be inclusive. Are we inclusive? Do we have the same percentage of friends as the streets, the people in the Canadian streets? Do we have enough Indian in our life? Do we have enough Chinese in our life? Do we have enough Nigerian in our life? South African in our life? Or we only befriend people that we're comfortable <laughs> to befriend and they look like us. They have the same conversation. Their mom act like my mom. So how do I learn about them, <laughs> right? Never seeing how others live and what they believe is something that will stop us to understand each other. So as journalists, every time you share a story, every time you show our country as it is, you are bringing a little bit of good in a world that quite honestly needs it very so badly. We're a better country when we know each other, when we see each other and ourselves. Last year, Canada welcomed 340,000 immigrants. In one year, this is the highest year that we welcomed immigrants for the last 100 years from different 175 countries. In one year, 340,000 from 175 countries. Well, this is the face of Canada today. It's diverse. That's not going to go anywhere. So to make it inclusive is our choice. It's your choice. And it's not in the streets, in boardrooms, in members of parliaments, and in media. It has to be that face diverse, as diverse as Canada, as diverse as the streets of this country. Many of these immigrants are just starting out. Many of them will one day become what they celebrate. But they only can become what they celebrate. And they can only celebrate what they see and what you write about them and what you report about them. So please, 
Be proud of who you are and let them celebrate. Because if you write about them, the rest of them will follow and we become what we celebrate. Thank you. I'm so inspired by what Muhammad just shared with us. So inspired because he really hit it home that we do have to celebrate our diversity, but it's a choice to be inclusive. Gives a lot of motivation that anyone could actually step up and do this. But it'd be so much easier if we did it together. It's so much easier if we paved the way and told people that we are the agents of change. So, Muhammad, thank you very much for not only sharing your story, but for warming us up today, for motivating us, for making this session very enthusiastic with you, with your uh, story. So, just thank you so much.